Ford Motor Company is trading at a relatively cheap forward price to earnings ratio when compared to the average stock in the S&P 500. That has a lot of investors asking if Ford is an excellent stock to buy right now. I'll answer that question in this video reviewing Ford's key financial metrics including revenue growth, operating profit margins, cash flow, return on invested capital, looking at its balance sheet and long-term debt in cash, and finally comparing it all against its valuation to determine if long-term investors should buy Ford stock right now. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. Starting with revenue, you'll notice Ford has demonstrated solid revenue growth in the last decade. Of course, having that big fallout during the early stages of the pandemic before rebounding to levels higher than where it was before the outbreak. At $180 billion in trailing 12-month revenue, that's $30 billion higher than where it was in 2015. Of course, the big transition for Ford Motor Company is to electric vehicles. In the United States, electric vehicles are underperforming forecasts made five, six years ago, where many people thought that electric vehicles would be a larger percentage of total vehicle sales. Right now, there's still less than one out of 10 vehicles sold. Ford is still benefiting from the legacy models that are generating significant profit margins, which are fueling investments to the transition to electric vehicles. Ford has scaled back investments like its rival automakers. Every automaker essentially has realized that electric vehicles are not that popular just yet, at least in the United States. They're much more popular in China. They're a little more popular in Europe than in the United States, but the United States is far behind those other markets in terms of EV adoption. So Ford has prudently scaled back plans, scaled back investments, paused or pushed out investments in development. So I think that was a prudent uh, adjustment by management, which has acknowledged that they're losing several billions of dollars annually on their EV investments. Looking at Ford's operating profit margin over the last decade, you'll notice uh, less than 10% and little demonstration of improvement. I've been talking for several years now about the auto industry, how it's not a lucrative industry. It's very capital intensive, very competitive, and doesn't generate strong profitability. You'll notice Ford here in the last decade never really went above 8% in operating profit margin. And in the most recent trailing 12 month period at just 2.21% operating profit margin. You might ask, why is the auto industry not very attractive? Why don't they generate higher profit margins when each car they sell can be 40, 50, 60, 80, $100,000. And it has to do with the structure of the industry, the capital investments required to maintain competitiveness, the negotiating power of workers and the oversupply of vehicles in the market with the high barriers to exit. Now, let me elaborate on that high barriers to exit point. When a car company builds a manufacturing facility with, let's say, the capacity to build, let's say, 250,000 units in that specific manufacturing facility. Well, it's hard for them to then say, you know what, we're not going to produce that many vehicles even if the market is not very strong for cars, they'll still produce up to or close to the capacity of that facility because they've already spent so much building that facility. They still need to spend to maintain that facility to make sure it's up to par, to make sure that it can still be competitive. And so if they're going to spend that money anyways, they might as well produce those cars and then try and sell it at a contribution market break even or slightly above, even if the overall profit margin might not be great. When you consider all the sunk costs they've already put in, it makes sense for them to continue producing vehicles. And that's true for nearly every automaker, except the ones that outsource their manufacturing. And so that's why you have this constant oversupply in the industry, and it's no different right now. So for a brief moment during the pandemic, you had a reprieve of that dynamic where there were supply chain shortages, so production was incredibly low. And so auto companies were able to sell all their models at premium prices and they were selling out. And it was a great time for automakers during the pandemic, especially for EV automakers. And 
a lot of investors got a little bit fooled into thinking that this is how it's going to be from now on for EVs and for regular car companies. When it was just a unique scenario because of supply chain shortages, the industry is quickly reverting back to old dynamics where there's an oversupply, you're seeing inventories increase. And so that structural dynamic is what keeps profit margins low in the auto industry. And similar story with its cash flow from operations at just 7.75%. With little improvement, it's actually going backwards. In the last decade, it's moved lower. Now, on top of all that, I mentioned that the company is very capital intensive and that translates into high levels of debt here. Long, total net long-term debt of $116 billion. This is its long-term debt minus cash, so it's net long-term debt of $116 billion. Of course, this includes its financing arm, but I don't think it should be separated because without those financings, they wouldn't be able to sell as many cars. Imagine how many cars would be sold if people couldn't borrow to purchase the car, right? So you need to have that lending. That's what supports the market. Without the lending, auto sales would be, what, 40, 50, 60% lower than they are right now. So debt is absolutely essential in the auto market. And thankfully, the Federal Reserve just slashed interest rates by 50 basis points. So hopefully that will help spur some auto sales because people, when they go to buy a car, they're looking at the total monthly payment and the interest rate has a lot to do with the total monthly payment in addition to the actual selling price of the vehicle. And if you look at return on invested capital, which demonstrates how good a company is at taking investor capital and turning it into profits, you'll again notice why the industry is not very lucrative and why I've personally avoided the auto industry, investing in the auto industry. And you can see return on invested capital of just 2% in the latest update. And again, it's uh, hardly ever even approached 10%. And when you consider that Ford's cost of capital is uh, likely above double digits, uh, you're, you're not generating shareholder wealth when your return on invested capital is lower than your weighted average cost of capital. And so all of those reasons combined, you can understand why Ford is trading at a relatively cheap valuation. It's one of the cheapest stocks you can find in the market when measuring by the forward price to earnings ratio of 5.7. But at the same time, you're not getting much in return with an investment in Ford. You're getting a company with low profit margins, low growth, entering a transition in an industry that requires tens of billions of dollars of investments in highly competitive new markets. And return on invested capital has never eclipsed 10%. And so all of these factors justify a really cheap valuation. So I don't think this cheap valuation is a buying opportunity. I think this cheap valuation is justified because the market is just not attractive. The auto market is just not an attractive industry to invest in. So to update my recommendation of Ford stock, I've had it rated as a hold. And I'll reiterate that hold recommendation here. I wouldn't be buying Ford stock today. Hey everyone, so many of you have been asking about my investing strategy and I'm excited to announce that I've written a book that's available for sale now that describes my six-step invest investing framework for evaluating stocks. I've added the link in the description below.